and no King's Row. Now that he seems to be picking the maps, they like that there are certain parts of the map that maybe lend themselves towards that team's strengths. At any rate, out the gates, it's going to be relatively similar team compositions. Key difference being Xenofly on the D.Va for the defense compared to Aros on the Roadhog for the attack. We can see... I've seen mostly D.Va on the offense, but like we like we had in the previous semi-final, right, it's been a, a defense today that's been running a lot of D.Va on the defense as opposed to D.Va on the offense. And Final Society should be looking for their first rotation on the high ground. Also, first hold hook combo. Ooh, that's a uh, tasty one onto Kim Gute there. Really going to open the door as they look to push on to this point. They've also put down the immortality field. They want to be hard to counterattack right now. And with that, they've already accumulated two ticks. That is a nice find onto Iris there. But as the dive comes through from Xeno Fly, he gets D-Mech, but that's a huge headshot from Lilorax. It removes so much of the damage potential from Far East Society, who are now solely reliant on Bubble Kitty. The immortality field's down on both sides here. This has become a very scrappy fight. You like to think that in the long run that favors Fire East Society with the closer respawn, but they are also in a very tricky position here. And Fire Society caught in the corner, and Kim Kutain is going to start collecting kills for esports. Are not going to let up here. Whoa. First, Frank and Strike is going to rake across. Yeah, Fire East Society aren't going to give up either. Red and Evil re entering the fight makes his presence firmly known, but Little Rax is still here and making his presence known. And with that, it is still going to be the hold from Global Esports. It just ends up being a far more costly one. And usually the second amplification matrix is going to be the one that doesn't get you the value. See, Fearless dropped that one first. Faith responds a couple seconds later, but you have to start looking at the May walls because Kim Gute had on that Force Fire Society to reposition away from being able to really capitalize on their matrix. And that means they couldn't put the damage out there. Global Esports had a better angle. Oh. Force Fire Society in the corner. And now you have a team stuck against the wall again just can't make that rotation they tried to use the may war to cover it they at least don't lose anyone there so they'll be able to finish this rotation but global esports have got a big bank of ultimates underneath their belts and they'll be able to lean on that Ooh, now it's a nice halt pulls people into the path of the dragon strike and that they were was already relatively vulnerable to it anyway that was inside an immortal immortality field though uh, just to note as well a couple members died just that's basically brutal. standing around it, and that's, yeah. uh, that's pretty rough. Fire Society going to be dropping away. We've got all the esports leaning into those ultimates, and now looking pretty decent here with about a minute 25 remaining. Fire Society still need ults. They've got yep. a couple coming They're online. Close. That was really brutal, partially because it was so cheap for global esports, and Fire Society used the only ultimate they had at the time. It's a nice hook in, but Kim you take and just ice cube up, and now. This is still Fire East Society frozen up in this blizzard. The immortality field helps, but there's still a nice angle that Little Rax has on Fearless, who would have otherwise had an amplification matrix coming into this. Red and Evil trades one back, but now trade one bait, one traded forward again, and that's Arrows committing a whole hog with the team already in a numbers deficit. That feels like a mistake. And Fire Society now running out of options. Global Esports actually didn't have the cleanest fight possible there, where, okay, they put the blizzard down first, a really nice place. Fearless has the uh, immortality field up. Bubble Kitty as well has a nice defensive mail that blocks out most of the incoming damage. They, for the most part, survive the Blizzard coming in. But then they lose a member. Self-Destruct as well collects Sad Shock. It starts falling apart very quickly. Very late commit onto the whole hog, like you mentioned as well. There's a bit of an unfortunate one for Fire Society to lose coming into the last fight. And it feels like they haven't yet had a fight with an ultimate advantage. And this being 15 seconds to go, they're not going to get one. They've just got to get something out of this amplification matrix and possibly the Blizzard if they get it already under pressure and they lose gun. Iris. That is super rough. Now they don't even have that one ultimate. Bubble Kitty with a blizzard tosses it out, goes down straight away. Red and Evil has to work double shift, triple shift even. Gonna be on his feet all afternoon, but he's able to run it down home. That's incredible to find those two and they've managed to get a bunch of other kills, but Luke? they're not quite done just yet because Global Esports with the few members they had was just a few more than Far East Society. And Lil Rex wasn't even there. It was just Luke and Faith. Faith, by the way, who's walked away on a sliver of HP. Luke, by the way, who got two kills in the middle of that. So, I don't know. Someone's working overtime over here. And yeah. looks like Global Esports managing to complete that hole. Then they, this might now be yeah. that 3 and 0 they've been working hard for. And for Forex Society, absolute heartbreak if it all ends here. Yeah, I tell you what. 
We're not going to have a draw. We're not going to have a prolonged series in that regard. Someone's going to be winning it here. Either Fari Society are going to complete a better hold than Global Esports, or they are going to be sent packing from this playoffs. You have 85.9% required to be camped by Global Esports, which does mean that Fari Society can relieve a bit of that point pressure. They can back out a little bit, wait for members or wait for ultimates to dissipate before they have to contest again. That's something they can work with. It's better than having to consistently be on that point. This, by the way, was one of the fights in the middle where you had a bunch of members, despite being in this the immortality field, maybe they were just slightly Iris, off to the edge. Yeah, Iris and Fearless moved back just enough to be out of the circle, I think. Let's actually look at uh, sightlines. I wonder if it's uh, the pillar there as well. Does it block the sightline? Is that required? Yeah, you see Iris does get just out the back end of it, I believe. I wonder actually, because I feel like I've seen a fair bit of that. I wonder actually if Dragon Strike might still damage through Immortality Field somehow. It they don't it seem to be kill. in it. It doesn't, it doesn't reduce yeah. your health below the threshold. So. It, they, they do appear to be out of it. I mean, if you go by the health bar indicator at yeah, the top be... there, they weren't in it at the moment of death. You see it disappears from Iris a split second before he dies. Likewise for Fearless. That, that was a really unfortunate yeah. push either way. That was one of the key defensive holes for Global Esports that really secures the eventual A completed defense. And now our fire society need to do even better than that. And then that yeah. look, it can be done. Nice. It will be difficult though. That's a good start. Settling in for the long haul here. It is reasonable though. So they do get to, to complete the rotation. You're gonna be looking for another pick. They nearly find Zeon Flux. Not losing a member here is really important for Global Esports because now they can launch a proper assault on the point itself, pulling members off. Now this has ruined the setup of Fire Society. Yep. They're all on the floor. And they need to decide, do we try reposition, let them get onto the point, or do we sit on the point and try and take the fight right Tick's there gone. in front of them? And that's a bit of hesitation means, like you said, a tick gone. And now they still need to make that decision at some point. They're only just getting onto it now. You see Satchok walls off. The rest at least come around the side to his defense, but he still goes down to sleep with Connect but they're not able to follow up on it. Too many minutes it out now from Kim Yute. It does get stopped up by Aros, but honestly, the damage has been done. Lil Rex collects a massive gamut of kills. Global Esports are going to punch their ticket to the Grand Finals. And their very first ever Grand Finals. This is now going to be Global Esports claiming the highest possible result that they've ever had in their contenders history in their run through contenders ever so now they'll be facing talent esports in next week's grand finals they look pretty decent this week going into this fire society like you mentioned felt pretty confident about this particular matchup but yeah. results wise o2 busan you'll give them you'll, you'll say it once more that that was competitive harris slightly less so hollywood a wash zero one yeah. Global esports looked indomitable. They really started to come online more and more and more. I mean, we were even seeing that yesterday in their quarterfinal that was itself a three and zero. And I would say today they even started hotter than they did yesterday. It actually feels like in these last couple of days of competitive play, Global esports, they've just started looking better and better. In this current meta, they've started looking far more solid, far more comfortable. Question still hangs over their heads. Will it be enough to take on Talon? On the other side of this, though, look, the Zero to Hero story may end here for Far East Society, but I still want to compliment them on coming in completely unknown in every respect of the word into this regular season. They did end up getting some strong pickups as things went along, but to go from that into the second place finish, the direct seed into the semifinals, like, that is already establishing yourself as a force in this region i'd like to see what they're capable of in future seasons yeah they're going to need to uh be able to now look past this particular match and it's an unfortunate loss to global esports but it will be a learning experience and look you sometimes need a season to get this learning experience and like you sort of mentioned they've sort of blown away expectations already yeah they have already learned so much they've already got a lot of experience off of this season alone both our trials teams made it into playoffs and our second seed from trials behind green leaves ended up finishing ahead of green leaves even in playoffs as well as in the regular season and you start to see now maybe the 2-2-2 change maybe the roll lock and the subsequent patch change did affect fire society just a little bit more than anticipated certainly from my perspective something you note about fire society in the past is they were a team very much built around playing around Satchok on the Ryan. They're a very yeah. aggressive 3 3 Goats team playing the Ryan Zarya playing a lot of that as a main damage output and playmaking potential now having Satchok on something like an Orisa now playing a more 
defensive, passive style on a 2 2 2 lineup. It's not quite the same Fire Society, and I think that was uh, very well felt today. Certainly was, but we do need to start assessing that question that I said we were going to hold off on because it is now the most present one. Are Global Esports going to be a team that can slow down Talon? Because you wouldn't have said they were the front runner to do so really at any point in this season, even when I, they were the other team hovering say, around the top. I think we'll still have a reasonably competitive finals. I'll say unquote. that I'll say that uh, during the period that Nova looked very shaky and Xavier dropped off as well and we weren't sure about the Trials teams, that was about when Global Esports was definitely the clear front runner. Towards the end, I would say, between them and Fire Society, it was still a close enough race that yeah. Global Esports had a fair shot at number two. The problem is we've spent an entire season saying it's been a race for number two, yeah. and Talon are just far too far ahead for anyone to catch up. And despite three zeros back-to-back -back for Global Esports, Still a little unsure if that's going to be enough to really catch up to Talon by next week. It's, uh, it's going to be a hard week for them to really yeah. grind it out. Really, really tall order. A lot of work to be done. Uh, but look, nothing's out of the question. We'll go ahead and see how we have arrived at this juncture, though. We have those two teams seated into the semifinals. One carried on forward to the finals. That's Talon and easily the most dominant. And I wouldn't even be surprised if it has been the fastest 3-0 in professional Overwatch. I'd be curious to see what the total minutes played is on that. And on the other side of that, Global Esports, I suppose in terms of end season rankings, completely upset to take their place in the finals as well alongside Talon Esports. But right now we are still looking at a season where we will, for the first time, crown our first consecutive winner. No one has won twice in a row. Talon are the first team with a significant opportunity to do that. There is just one more hurdle in their way, and there is a week for that hurdle to build itself up to be big enough yep. and bulky enough to truly trip Talon up. Yeah, not only will they be our first ever two-time winner, they'll now be our first ever three-time winner if they go that far. Yeah. First time for a team to go back to back as well, which has never happened. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously they've the only one team has won twice, and that wasn't back to back. So this time will be three. And that's and been in a row. Global Esports, as mentioned, this will be their first ever grand final. They've been working to get this one for a while. I remember from last season, it felt like, you know, maybe it could have been the time in the season. You know, they were looking okay. They were looking like they could. You know, every time we've seen Global Esports, it's kind of like, you know, this could be the time for them. That's looking like it's. A real good possibility. I remember season three as well was a bit of a heartbreak when they exited quite early up against, I believe it might have been, was it? Um, Back in my brains. I have a feeling it was Jupiter, actually. The slightest inkling it was mm. Jupiter. I, I need to double check. I need to exactly. double check how season one of the year went. That was water season, but that's I believe. The, but, yeah, uh, it was. But that's the thing. That was season three of last year, I think. But at any rate, uh, yeah. that like on the whole, they've just... They've... Looks reasonable, right? Every season, even when we've maybe come in with relatively low expectations, they've generally exceeded them. And now to the point of actually making a finals, there's a yep. point where we have to say, this is one of our better teams in the region. The unfortunate fact of the matter for them is that in a lot of ways, this is Talon's region. Everyone they else is just playing in it. Been consistently, I would say, among the upper teams of the Pacific region, but now we'll see the best of the best. If they, can, uh, if they can now prove who is exactly going to be number one representing the region at the Gauntlet, the Grand Finals will be happening next week. Sorting your screens. A lot to look forward to still. But the semifinals are now over, so we're going to be signing off. We'll see you all once again later.